Welcome to this edition of Beat Diabetes. We're still in our books and quotes series. We're kind of going in and out of that. And, uh, but for the last several weeks, we've been talking about this book, Rethinking Diabetes by Gary Taubes. Uh, this is not the book you want to read if all you want to do is, uh, all you want to learn is points A, B, C, D, how do I beat diabetes? Uh, if you want that, you need a simpler book. This goes into the history of diabetes and the, the various arguments between one, and, one expert and another, one so-called expert and another, about just what do you do about diabetes? It's kind of astonishing, really, that for over a century, diabetologists have been arguing with each other about the best approach for diabetes, and that hasn't even stopped to this day. There's still quite a dispute about what do you really do. Uh, and so we're going to get a little bit uh, into some more of the history of this as Gary Taubes uh, talks in his chapter, The Fear of Fat. And I want to share a quote. He says, before diabetologists could embrace the idea of prescribing carbohydrate-rich diets to patients suffering from a disorder, defined first and foremost by an inability to properly metabolize the carbohydrates in the diet. And he says the physicians had to believe that carbohydrates are benign to those with diabetes as long as they either take their insulin or maintain a healthy weight. Now, I want to just emphasize the first part of that sentence. Before they could embrace the idea of prescribing carbohydrates, a carbohydrate-rich diet, they had to kind of justify it because everybody knew that carbohydrates were a problem for diabetics. And so he said they had to try to convince themselves that they're actually benign as long as A, you give them lots of insulin to cover the carbs, or B, you get them skinny to where the carbs don't bother them so much. But I think that's kind of a fascinating opening half of that sentence where he basically says they had to find a way to justify a carb-rich diet for diabetics. And it's like, why would you need to find a way for that? We'll talk about that a little bit more. But it, it is odd to me. It's kind of like somebody's allergic to peanuts, and you've got to find a way to justify giving them more peanuts and lots of peanuts, peanuts for breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day, and yet they're allergic to peanuts, and it's causing them to develop rashes and all kinds of problems, and so you got to sit down and, and do some brainstorming and try to figure out a justification for giving a peanut allergic person peanuts or giving an alcoholic alcohol and so forth. So uh, very odd. Now, he goes on to say that uh, in the early days before insulin, and there were a few diabetics, not many, but in those early days, they understood that you've got to include fat, uh, quite a bit of fat in the diet of diabetics, or they're just going to die. There were no meds in those early days, like in the 1800s up to about 1913. There were no meds. There was no insulin to give. So the only hope they had, if they had serious diabetes, was you just cut the carbs way, way, way down. It was just, it was just simple logic. And it, time and experience proved it again and again and again. You want those people to live? You better cut those carbs down. So he says this, until 1913, specialists generally believed that copious dietary fat was a necessity in the diabetic diet. It was called the staple food in diabetes. The staple food in diabetes is fat. Give them fat. And after they've eaten that, give them more fat. So a big emphasis on things like butter and fatty steaks and fatty fish and just lots and lots of fat. Why do you give them so much fat? You don't have much choice because they don't handle carbs at well, uh, very well at all. If they're going to eat many carbs, they're going to die. Before meds, before insulin, that was really the only choice. So doctors had enough sense to say, well, if that's the only thing that's going to keep them alive is cutting their carbs way down and increasing their fat way up, then yeah, we got to do it. All of that changed when they discovered insulin. Lo and behold, they came to realize that we can keep them alive at least for a while, giving them quite a few carbs. 
So, Gary says, once insulin was discovered in 1921 and put to use in therapy, ever more carbohydrate-rich diabetic diets were employed. The fact that diabetic diets could be both high in fat and high in calories and that those with diabetes had reportedly thrived on those diets would be simply disregarded. In other words, yeah, they had done well in the past by eating a lot of fat and not very many carbs, but now we've got insulin. Now we've got a tool, we've got a weapon that we never had before. So now the floodgates come open, eat your carbs, just take some extra insulin or take a lot of insulin. So everything changed when they discovered insulin. When they realized you can eat a high carb meal, cover it with insulin, or have a high carb day and cover it with insulin, and you apparently are going to do okay. I say apparently because... It proved that that wasn't really the best idea. In fact, it wasn't a good idea at all. But at first, they, they were like, we found it. Folks, eat your bread, eat your crackers, eat your potatoes, eat your rice, eat your candy, eat your sweets. Doesn't matter because we've got the insulin to cover you, baby. So just go ahead and enjoy whatever you like to eat. There was one guy way back in, uh, well, not so much way back, over 50 years now, 60 years, named Blake Donaldson, who said this, you're out of your mind when you take insulin in order to eat Danish pastry. But uh, Taubes added, this man named Donaldson, Blake Donaldson, would be very much a minority opinion by then. So by the 60s, you had one guy, and I'm sure there were a few others, saying, you're crazy if you think you can just eat all your sweets and just take enough insulin to cover them. It's just not how you deal with diabetes. And it wouldn't just be Danish pastries. It'd be chocolate cake and ice cream. It would be monster-sized baked potatoes or a huge helping of mashed potatoes. And you're, you're crazy if you think you can just eat what you like and then take plenty of insulin or insulin plus meds or high-powered meds and maybe just a little insulin and everything is fine. And we've discovered it's not. All right. Taubes discusses in his next chapter, The Rise of the Carbohydrate-Rich Diet, the controversy between doctors and nutritionists on one side versus doctors and nutritionists on the other side of this question, what do you eat and what is allowed for the diabetic? Taubes writes, from the early days of insulin therapy, Diabetologists fell into two general schools of thought on how to handle its very considerable challenges. There were those who believed the best approach would be to establish the minimal dose of insulin on which their patients could be healthy, implying that the patients would be eating a diet that minimized the need for insulin. So he's like, there were some that said, we don't want to give them a lot of insulin. Yeah, we could do it. And that might enable them to eat more sweets and more carbs. But let's try to shoot for the minimal amount of insulin. And of course, for type 2 diabetics, most don't need any insulin at all if they will lower their carbs enough. So Gary is saying there were some saying, just hold on a minute. Let's not just overdose these people on insulin. Let's just try to give them a diet that will require the least amount of insulin. And of course, there are lots of doctors discovering that's the best way today. But then he talks about the other side. He says, on the other side of the divide were those who believed their obligation was not just to keep their diabetic patients as healthy as possible, but to minimize the psychological and social burden of living with the disease. And anything that could do that within reason was worth trying. So there was another group of the experts saying, let's just try to minimize what they have to limit. Let's allow them to eat pretty much a normal diet and we'll just make up for it with insulin and meds. It seems like almost from the foundation of the discovery of insulin, there were numbers of doctors and experts that were desperate to allow the diabetic to eat as many carbs as he liked. And I, I thought about that. I thought, why would that be? Why would it be that so many people were just, just desperate to be able to tell the diabetic, 
you don't have to change your diet. You can eat just like your neighbor eats. You can eat like everybody else eats. You can go out to the restaurant and eat just the way everybody else eats. And we're going to make sure that happens for you because we're going to give you some insulin or some meds. And if that doesn't work, we'll give you more insulin and more meds. And here's what they found. They found that that can work for a season. Maybe even 10 to 15 years, you can keep diabetics going along and they seem to be symptom-free and it seems like everything is rolling along beautifully. But at some point, that therapy of just lots of insulin, lots of meds, eat what you like, starts to break down. And the health of that diabetic starts to break down. And suddenly they discover that wasn't really the best plan. And I've, I've thought about, you know, why? Why would they be so desperate to give diabetics carbs? And really the truth is, it's not just diabetics. The whole world is overdosing on carbohydrates. It's not doing, there's a lot of people that it's not doing them a favor at all. I came up with several reasons based on some of the things Gary has said and just some of my own reasoning. First, there's a lot of people that have a bias that says that if you don't eat carbs, you're unnatural. Or if you don't eat a lot of carbs, you're unnatural. If you don't heap up your plate with lots of potatoes and rice and have a nice dessert after dinner, you're, you're a freak. You're unnatural. And uh, we don't want you to be unnatural. Secondly, a lot of people think that if you don't eat carbs, it'll be unhealthy. You will not be a healthy person. You need your carbs. You need those potatoes. You need that rice. You need that bread. You need that cake, that pie, that Snickers candy bar. You need it. And if you don't get it, you're going to hurt yourself health-wise. Now, I know that's a weird thing, but uh, there are some people that believe that. And then thirdly, there are those who say, well, you won't be happy. We want to make you happy, diabetic. We want you to be happy, and we know you'll never be happy if you don't get your sweets and get your carbs and get your potatoes and get your rice and get your bread. You won't be a happy person, so we want to make you happy. We'll find a way to keep you happy, and we'll just give you more meds and insulin. Another reason that many endocrinologists and doctors and nutritionists tell diabetics, go ahead and eat the way you always have. Just take your meds and insulin. They think it's really not even doable. It's undoable to expect and ask the diabetic to eat differently from the way 90-some percent of their countrymen are eating, Americans, British, Australians, Africans, to eat in a way that is unique and different from most people around you. You'll hurt yourself psychologically. You'll think of yourself as some kind of a freak. You won't like it. You won't enjoy it. So why should we ask you to do the impossible? No, we'll not ask you to do that. We'll just prescribe you some more meds. We'll prescribe you some insulin. Now, let me say for a type 1 diabetic, yeah, you need insulin. But how much insulin you need is very much dependent on how you eat. And for most type 2 diabetics, you don't need insulin at all once you get yourself under control and you cut your carbohydrates way, way down. And, the, you know, this undoable that, well, they won't do it anyway. This idea that, well, if I ask the diabetic to give up on all the starches and the sweets and to, to eat this way, they won't do it. So why should I even ask them? Yet... Just in my little simple Beat Diabetes channel, and I'm not even a doctor or a nutritionist, we hear of report after report into the thousands of diabetics that say, I'm no longer diabetic according to the numbers. My doctor tells me I'm not diabetic anymore. My A1C is not diabetic. My fasting glucose is not diabetic. My uh, symptoms have gone away. The, the, the complications have gone away. I no longer need to urinate all, all night long. Just in this little simple channel, and, and that's just me. There's, there's multiple other channels and doctors and nutritionists and low-carb conferences that are producing testimonies by the hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people that have gone back and turned around and gone out of the land of diabetes. And they find it is doable. I find that myself... 
If someone were to tell me, well, Dennis, I know you can't keep it up. I'd be like, well, I've done it for 20 plus years. Why do you suppose that I can't continue now? I'm enjoying my diet. There are plenty of alternatives, plenty of modifications that can be made, plenty of substitutes that can be made. Is my diet and my lust for carbohydrates so strong I'm unwilling to do what I need to do? The answer is no. So there's been a struggle back and forth between the experts all throughout the 20th century. And the 20th century was the century where fat became the bad guy. Gradually over each decade, fat got a worse and worse reputation and carbs were promoted and promoted and promoted until these days we're eating five times, 10 times as many carbs as our great-great-grandpa used to eat back in the 1800s. My friend, your health is too precious for you to throw it away just because your neighbors are poisoning, them, poisoning themselves. It doesn't mean you have to do it as well. You can see victory. You can overcome. And part of it, uh, the major part of it, is going to involve reducing the carbohydrates and increasing the fat and the protein. I want to remind you that we've grouped certain videos together into series that are available for you to download on your phones or computers. Out of the many hundreds of videos I've made about diabetes, I put together three series that I consider to be the most important and fundamental for the newly diagnosed diabetic who is desperate to get their blood sugar down in a hurry. First is the original series I call the Diabetes Emergency Kit. Second is the series titled More Fundamentals of Beating Diabetes. And third is my latest series called Beat Diabetes in Six Months. And these are videos specifically created from our Beat Diabetes Challenges. There'll be a link in the description that will take you to where you need to go to purchase any one or all three of these Beat Diabetes series. You can watch the videos immediately on your phone or computer, and you can also download them. Also, I give you permission to copy these files, put them on a flash drive, and share them with someone you care about.